Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mac here. Welcome back to another new video. Uh, today we're going to be taking another look at uh, homebrew uh, casks. So I made a video a little bit ago uh, trying to create a batch installer for casks. And if you're not familiar with casks or what exactly we're trying to do, you can hang out to the end of the video and, uh, you know, as usual, I'll try to explain it a little bit better. Uh, but basically the idea was that I created a batch installer uh, just using plain text. And in that video, I kind of left it uh, admitting that I was wanting something a bit better. And I think that I have found that. Uh, so go ahead and open up uh, your terminal. Again, the goal of what we're trying to create is every time that you, you know, install a, a cask, uh, you know, it's brew cask install and then the name of the app. Pretty simple, self-explanatory. It'll go through a whole process. And, and there are like a ton of casks out there that are available. And this is a really good way to manage installing apps because it handles updates and everything better. It's just the problem that we're trying to solve is that every time you install an app, you have to do it one at a time, you know, line by line. So what I wanted to do was just create a file that I could keep basically for forever and use to install apps on every uh, new computer that I interact with or every new uh, Mac that I interact with at least. And so what we're gonna do is basically create a bash script to uh, go ahead and install all of the apps at once. So when you're in your terminal, make sure you're in the uh, home directory. Uh, if you're not sure exactly where you are, uh, you can always just type uh, pdw. That'll uh, print your directory. And you can see I'm just in users slash Mac, which is exactly where I want to be. And if I type ls, I can see all the files that are here. And this is a good place to store a bash script uh, just because it's the default. Uh, this is where your terminal window is should open up. Uh, unless you've changed it, uh, in which case I would probably store uh, store any scripts there. Now, if we take a look here, we've got a couple of folders inside of the default home directory, you know, your documents, downloads, Dropbox, and that type of thing. Uh, down here at the end, I've got two files here. This is called a cask install and cask upgrade. And what these are are two scripts that I've created that I can run at any time to uh, install new casks or... Uh, Actually, I'm not sure exactly what I was doing with this one, but whatever. So uh, in order to create a new file, uh, you can just type touch and we'll create a new file here. We'll call it cask config or something like that. Uh, we'll just call it cask. And you can add an extension if you want to. .sh will work. Uh, I'm just going to leave it without an extension. Uh, it works fine either way, at least on my end. Uh, and then if we hit ls again, you can see we've got a new file right here called cask. All right, so now we just need to open this up in a text editor. Emacs is built into OSX by default, and I believe if you install Homebrew, Nano will also be installed. But you could also just do Brew install Nano to install Nano if you want to, or you could also do Brew install Vim to install Vim. And those are just three text editors that people like to use to create bash scripts. Uh, I personally am partial to Vim, at least at the moment. So I'm just gonna type in Vim and cask. Uh, and of course, this process is going to be the same no matter what text editor you use. You could open up this file in text edit to edit it, and you'll still be adding exactly the same things. So we're just going to go ahead and hit enter. And now we are inside of Vim uh, editing our document. Uh, so the first thing that we need to do is uh, put a line at the top to let the document know that this is a bash script and where to find the bash program. Uh, so if you're also using Vim, hit I to go into insert mode. And then we're going to type uh, hashtag exclamation point. This is called a shebang. Uh, and then I'm going to type out uh, slash user or USR, not U-S-E-R, big difference there, uh, slash bin, slash ENV, and then bash. And there's a few different ways to write this out. Uh, a lot of times you can just do uh, slash bin slash bash. Uh, you know, if we take a look here in Alfred, what we're essentially just doing is trying to locate the bash program. So you can see on my system, the way that it's set up, I could write slash bin slash bash without a problem and it'll find it. Now the reason that you would write it out the long way like user slash bin slash env bash is because this is a more portable way to write it. It should be more universal. It should work on pretty much any Mac you run it on and also a whole lot of Linux machines. Uh, so that's really, really good. Uh, and then once you're in the bash script, uh, you can write anything that you would normally be able to write in a terminal window. So any program that you can run uh, via the terminal you can run in a bash script for the most part. Um, so I'm gonna type echo, and then I'm just gonna type, uh, let's see, uh, updating casks, and dot, dot, dot. Go ahead and close out of that. 
Uh, if you're in Vim, you can hit escape, semicolon, or colon, and then uh, write, and that'll save any changes that you've made. Uh, and then let's see, I'm just gonna open up a new window. Yeah, that'll probably work. Uh, I'm going to try to run this program as we're editing it so that we can just see the changes that we're making. Um, so if we hit LS, you can see, of course, we still have this cask program here. Uh, and in order to make this executable, we have to do one little thing here. We'll type uh, chmod plus x, and this is using the chmod program uh, to make the file executable. That's what the plus, plus x stands for. Then we just have to give it the cask, you know, the name of the file. So we'll call it cask. And assuming that no arguments pop up and it just goes to the next line like this, we should be good to go. Uh, so then I'm going to type dot slash cask. And this is how we'll run our program from now on. Uh, you'll type dot slash and then whatever you've named your script. And it'll run, and you'll see we get a little message here that says updating casks uh, spelled incorrectly. So let's try and fix that real quick. Updating casks, go ahead and exit, save the changes, come back over here, and we'll try and run the program again. Updating casks. So now let's go ahead and get into the fun part. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a variable called casks, hit the inner sign, and then open and close parentheses, and just bump that parentheses down to a new line. And the reason that I'm doing this is so that I don't have to write out every single line, every single command that we need to install all wraps. Now, if you remember, of course, to install a cask, you know, the command that you use is brew cask install, and then you'll enter the name of the app. So I could just come in here and say, all right, my first app up would be probably one password. And then I'd go to the next line. I'd say brew cask install Adam and then brackets, you know, so on until I get all the way down to whatever the last app on my list is. But that's not a great way to work. And it's not as easy to manipulate your program once you have it set up. So I'm going to do brew cask install. And then I want to reference this variable that we've set up. So I'll add the uh, dollar sign here. Uh, open up the parentheses with the uh, squiggly parentheses. Uh, I don't know what they're actually supposed to be called. I think they're uh, actually called brackets at that point. Uh, squiggly brackets, not, yeah. So, and then we'll type in the name of the variable, casks. And then we'll do square brackets, the at sign, close the square bracket, close the squiggly bracket. And now what's going on is we're referencing this variable that we set up here. So we could add anything inside of this variable. Uh, we could say Adam, or let's do something that I know is gonna be wrong. We'll do BG and AG. And these are two casks that don't exist. So I'm just trying to get a fail message, basically. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, I'll do echo updating complete. And then we'll go ahead and save again. And then if we come over here and run a program, we should get two error messages. Okay, and then you'll see here we get we get our error message. BG is unavailable. Did you mean one of these? And then we go down to the last line here where it says echo updating complete, and we get that message. So that's exactly what we wanted to happen. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, let's just uh, shrink this window really quick so it'll print everything on one line, and then I'll type in brew cask list. This should list every app that we have installed via casks. And let's go ahead and just copy them all. Okay. And then we can come back up to our script that we're writing here. And we can just paste them so that we don't actually have to write anything. That should be good to go. I'll go ahead and save again, which again, just hit escape, colon, type in write. And then if you want to leave Vim completely, you could just hit colon Q. All right, clear out both of these. And let's go ahead and try to run our new uh, program. So we'll run dot cask again. We get our message updating casks and it's gonna be doing quite a quite a bit of stuff, but in the end, it's going to ch check for every single cask on your computer. And if you don't have any of the ones installed, it will install them. So of course on my computer, I should just get a very long strain of fail messages saying, hey, literally every app you tried to install was already installed. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and let this run. And, and while that's happening, I'll try to explain what's going on. Oh, well, actually, there we go. There's our error messages. So if you were familiar with cast and everything, uh, this should actually probably be the in end of the video for you. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you're sticking around now, let's uh, let's try. I'll try to do a little bit of a better job explaining what exactly we just did in uh, the video. So let me open up a uh, finder window here and we'll see if we can't. Whoa do a little bit of a better job explaining what exactly is happening on the screen. So if I don't, if I open up my user folder here, this is my user folder 
which is the default directory in any terminal window. Um, so if I type ls, that's a list command, and it'll list all the files in a directory. You can see it lines up pretty much perfectly. We have applications, applications, caliber, caliber, so on and so forth, until we get down to these three little executable programs um, that I've created. So when we list a command in the terminal, all we're really doing is looking at these files. And as long as we're in this same directory, we will always be editing files in this directory. So when I say vim, I'm opening up a text editor program, and then I type in cask, I'm referencing this file here, I hit enter, now I'm editing this file. This is effectively the same thing as just coming to a file, right clicking, and saying open with, uh, we'll say Atom, because I have that one open, I believe. And you can see whether we're looking at it in Atom, or whether we're looking at it in Vim, we get the exact same text. Uh, it's gonna save in the same spot, everything's exactly the same. So all that we're really doing in this video that's, that's different is we're using the terminal to create files rather than using you know, a file explorer and like a normal kind of text editor. Uh, the other thing that we did uh, is we said touch to create a file, and that's just the command that you use to create a file in the terminal. You know, and we could create any file. We could say, give me a file that's called mac.txt. And then I would just have a general, normal, plain text file, nothing special whatsoever about it. Now, we're using the terminal to create these files only because we have to make them executables. Um, once we have made a file executable, as long as you don't uh, add a file extension to the end of it, you can just run it by double clicking on it. So this is the program we just created. If I were to double click on it, it will open itself up in a terminal window and do its thing without me having to type in anything crazy we just have a very simple script, we double click it, it's good to go. But in order to get this executable, we do have to use that chmod program that we were talking about. And all this is, is a program that lives inside of the terminal that creates executable files. You know, if we were to remove the extension from that text document that we just created, do the chmod plus x, we now have an executable text file that's gonna do nothing. So all this program does, chmod, is take a normal text file and make it executable. And all we're doing inside of this bash script that we're creating is taking the process that we already use to install casks, brew cask install, you know, and then the name of the app, and basically creating a way to make it more flexible and more user-friendly and a lot faster when we're setting up new systems. So if, if you're not familiar with casks at all, I definitely recommend you checking it out. It's a really, really great way to manage software. And I think I probably did a better job in the last video I made about casks explaining why exactly you would want to use uh, something like casks over the Mac App Store. But if, if you've got a few minutes, you know, go to YouTube or just Google like homebrew casks and you'll probably want to check it out and try it out at least and if you do now you know how to create a, a batch installer which at least for me I find to be incredibly incredibly useful and handy so uh, that's all for this video uh, thanks everyone for checking it out and I will see you in the next one